Hi everyone, in this lecture we're going to add an about page. Before adding an about page, I would like to tell you something that um, whenever you are running a Django development server and you make changes into any file within this project, within this meeting planner project, you don't need to rerun your server the Django development server, the server is going to detect, detect the changes as opposed to the methodology that we had for our Flask application that we need to run every different lecture so the server could run and detect the changes that we have, uh, that we have coded in that newer version of that lecture. Like in an like for example, in the first lecture, in the second lecture, we had uh, a little bit of code. Then we built on top of that in the next lecture, and we had to execute that specific file for the next lecture, so the application, the server, could detect those changes. But as far as Django is concerned, it is going to detect detect changes within this general meeting planner folder. So whatever you do, just go ahead and save it. Keep the server running. You don't have to close the server and rerun it. It's going to detect the changes. You don't have to really worry about that. And in case you're wondering about this VS Code, it usually pops up whenever there is a new update. You can just go ahead and delete that folder. It, it has nothing to do with our project. So I'm going to grab our virtual environment. There we go. So the virtual environment is created, uh, is selected. Now, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, uh, repeat this entire process of how a view function is created, how a URL is mapped, how that um, URL is requested in the browser. So first off, I'm going to create a view function. So the view function is going to be an about page. And I'm going to say we are not really going to use this date and about. These are just for demonstration purposes. So you really understand what is happening here. And this is going to return an HTTP response. Keep in mind, it has to return something. And I'm going to say, my name is Muslam Halali. Let's just save it. So when I saved it, you can see that the server is trying to detect those changes. It says, changed, reloading, watching for file changes with st uh, stat reloader performing system checks so it's so like a lot of mumbo jumbo like sci sci-fi movie then we need to import that view function in here which was about and then we need to provide it with a mapping so i'm going to say path where do i want it to be mapped to so you, you could provide anything in here i'm just going to write about and what is uh, this url is going to be mapped to to which view function is going to be mapped to the about view function. So if I save this, uh, there we go. It has select. It has detected all the changes and it reload, uh, reloaded everything. You just save that. There we go. You can see that it detects all the changes. So again, to go over this, uh, whenever we go to the browser and we search for about we can see that it says my name is Muslim Halali. So when I search for this page, a, an HTTP get request is made to the server, then Django is going to take a look at the URL. That is the first thing that the Django is going to take a look at. The get request is going to be handled by that view function. Django server has nothing to do with the, with the type of the request. The Django server only takes a look at the URL. Uh, the universal uh, resource locator. So when it finds this URL, it is going to take a look at in the URLs.py within the URL patterns, and it finds what is the URL that is, what is the view function that is mapped to this URL. It is the about. Then it is the job of this about view function to handle the HTTP request, whether that is a GET request, a POST request, an UPDATE request, or a DELETE request. Whatever that is, whatever kind of HTTP request it is, again, the HTTP request is handled by the view function, not the Django. Django has nothing to do with it, Django server. It just looks up the URL and it maps it to the view function. The rest is the job of our view function, what it is going to do. 
Therefore, towards the end of this uh, section, we are going to add a post request when the user tries to add a new meeting, plans a new meeting. We are going to add a post request within our view function because view function handles HTTP requests, whatever the, their type might be. Now, we are uh, essentially done with this lecture. I just wanted to show you that. Uh, just make sure that you really get this idea of how the server works, the flow control. And I would like to take some time and to talk about a Django application. So whenever uh, the word app is used by a Django developer, it, it means uh, something completely different from say an application for uh, the the word app used by a mobile developer or a front-end web developer or any other developer for that matter so the app word is different in the world of django than in other worlds a django app is a python package that is specifically intended for use in django projects so you could say that a mobile application has the same concept as a Django project, but it doesn't have the same concept as a Django application. It's a completely different thing. A Django project contains multiple Django applications or Django apps. So uh, you can break up the functionality of your project into multiple apps that each act as literal web applications or literal applications of their own. Uh, in this case, web applications. Uh, uh, with their own views, URL mappings, as well as components that we have yet to learn um, about, like models and templates. So that means that a typical Django project consists of consists of multiple apps. You can think of it as a way to organize your code. We put related things together in apps. A nice thing about writing apps is that sometimes you can make them reusable. Now, I have to say that designing an app to be reusable is a little too advanced for this course, uh, uh, for this project. Um, and we are not going to do that. Now, the way that I have created these projects, this is something that I probably should have told you in the Flask application is that each of these full stack applications, they're meant to be an essential course on that specific uh, Python framework. The reason that their structure is different than, let's say, the SQL course is because I do have a limit when it comes to creating uh, folder sections and lectures on this platform. So there is a limit. I need to be very, very uh, conservative when it comes to creating folders. So the first approach that I took was to provide, like, let's say, the name of the course would be the uh, like uh, Flask Essentials course. Then the name of each chapter within this Essentials course would be the thing that we did. For example, user interaction, adding functionality. For example, adding templates adding styles so each of these topics they require a separate section but because i am limited i cannot provide like unlimited number of sections and lectures i need to think of this like logistically it is not possible for me therefore even though this says full stack web development with django meeting planner full stack multi-page application it is a django essentials course that is why i'm talking a, a lot about how django works what is the theory what is the practice throughout this essentials course we are going to create an application but conceptually it is an essentials course the structure is different than the html5 essentials course or the css3 essentials course or the sql essentials course but in concept, they are the same. That's why you might hear me say like this course as opposed to this project. They're both the same thing. And um, now, um, uh, well, I, the, the last thing that I would like to say is that structuring your project into multiple apps, it helps, it does help your code be more modular and organized, but you are completely free to organize your apps any way you like. You could even decide to put everything in one huge app or not to use apps at all. But the best practice is to follow the Unix philosophy, 
to do just a single thing and do it well. So keep your app simple and small. If you need more than one sentence to explain what the purpose of your application is or what the purpose of your app is, it is probably too large. So once we have created our app, we are going to provide the code for that specific app within the uh, views and within the URLs for that app. So the first app that we created was the website. We are going to create another app by the name of Meetings as well uh, in, in our upcoming lecture. So you don't really need to worry about that. You're going to have plenty of practice working in apps. The website app, it is responsible for our homepage. The other app, which is the meeting app, it is going to be responsible for uh, the other pages that we have, like the um, adding new meetings, uh, showing all the meeting rooms, and providing details about any specific meeting. That's it for this lecture. See you in the next one.